Hi, this video is for you if you teach students computer science in like some kind of computer lab setup. Okay, so they've got computers and you want them to learn things, sometimes you have to make announcements. First, whenever I have to make an announcement, I say eyes, ears, and monitors off. Okay, so it's a normal thing, sort of K-12, to be like, oh, give me your eyes and ears, right? You want students to pay attention, and you're making it explicit what that looks like. The third thing we add here is, hey, I want you to turn your monitors off. It can be just a quick thing, and then you make sure you have their attention. It's also best if you can stand where you can see everybody's monitors when you're making an announcement to make sure that you've got their full attention. Okay, number two countdown before breaks. So if your students are really engaged in the problem solving process, which is exactly what you want, they're going to be super annoyed when you want them to turn their monitors off and make an announcement. So I find it's really helpful to respect their problem solving and to give them warnings, to be like, yo, three minutes from now, I'm going to make an announcement. Or three minutes from now, we're going to have the end of class and you're going to have to wrap everything up. Uh, and then right before the breaks, I say, okay, we're going to do eyes, ears, and monitors off in 10, 9, and I count it down. That way they can know what's coming uh, and, uh, and be sort of ready for it and have fewer of the like, oh, just one more thing, Colleen, sort of negotiations, which I don't love. Number three. Explain why there are food and, and drink restrictions in class. A lot of times in classes, kids will be used to, oh, you can drink water during class. That's a thing, uh, but not around the computers. Uh, additionally, with this, kids often don't know, like, what they might do that might break the computer. And they're afraid of that. They know they're expensive. Uh, and so help them understand what are the things that will and won't break the computer so that they can feel more comfortable. Not just like, oh yeah, don't have water around the computer, but just when they're programming in general, you're not gonna break anything, okay? Four, set the default home page. What I do is I often have like three or four pages that I know students are gonna have to go to. So what I do is I make a short, uh, a desktop shortcut to each one of those. So it's not just like go to the, you know, double, open up the internet and then click in this website address, yada, yada, yada. That can take a long time. So I just have the shortcut so they can go right there and get right to work. Okay, number five is try and promote healthy habits, okay? So that comes with how students are sitting. So I'll remind students um, to sit in ways that look like they might be sustainable. Additionally, you can teach kids about the 20-20-20 rule. So that's every 20 minutes, you should look away for at least 20 seconds and you should look away at least 20 feet. So that can be a good habit to bring into your classroom as a way to talk to kids about some of these healthy habits. Okay, number six, facilitate showing off work. So students can be really motivated by getting to show other people what they've done and see what other people have done. So you can do something called a gallery walk where students will walk around the classroom and see what other people have done. If you want people to also have the opportunity to explain what they've done, you can be like, oh, if you're born in January through June, stand up and walk around. Everybody else stay seated and you're going to show off your project. So you can have people alternate uh, who's showing off and who's showing. Okay. Last one, seven. Encourage asking peers for help. So a common phrase in K-12 is three before me. So before asking a teacher, you have to ask three of your peers. Okay, well, this can be helpful for a lot of reasons. One is it means as a teacher, you end up asking some of the more interest, you answer their more interesting questions, not just a what website am I supposed to go to kind of questions. Um, two, it can do a lot to support that collaboration, right? So, you know, well, even a shy student knows that they're going to have to ask a peer for help. And so it gives them sort of social cover when they have to ask a peer for help. Uh, and that's really what I want is I want a, an environment where students are getting to work together and collaborate. And then when I come over to a, a student who has raised their hand, I say, oh, who were your three before me? And then I know that these three students weren't able to answer those questions, that question. And so they might be uh, uh, benefit from being involved in that same discussion. Okay. Good luck managing your CS lab.